Welcome. In this video, we will see the Timer 1 module present in PIC microcontroller. In the previous video, we have seen the Timer 0 module that is present in PIC microcontroller. So the Timer 1 module is a 16-bit timer counter module. So it can count from 0000, 0000 hex to FFFF hex. The value of this timer counter is stored in two 8-bit resistors. The name of those 8-bit uh, resistors are TMR1H and TMR1L. So this TMR1H is a higher resistor and this TMR1L is a lower resistor. The TMR1 resistor pair that is TMR1H and TMR1L increments from 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex to FFFF hex. And once the value in those resistors is FFFF hex and if we give one more clock pulse, then the value in that resistor pair becomes 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex. That is, it rolls over to uh, the 0 hex value. The timer one can operate in one of the two modes. First one is as a timer and as a second one is as a counter. So uh, whenever timer one operates as a timer, it means that we are going to give the internal CPU clock as a input to the timer. And whenever we are going to operate this timer one as a counter, then it means that we are going to give external clock signal as an input to the timer. The operating mode of the timer one is determined by the clock select bit that is TMR1CS. This bit is present in the SFR T1 con that is timer one control SFR and the bit number one of that SFR is used for selecting the clock source. Then timer one can be enabled or disabled by setting or clearing control bit that is TMR1 on. This bit is present in again timer one control SFR that is bit number zero. So whenever we want to start the timer, this TMR1 on bit should be made equal to one. And whenever we want to turn off the timer one, then we have to simply make this bit equal to zero. Then when the timer one oscillator is enabled that is T1 OSC EN is set the RC1 and RC0 pins become inputs. It means that we have a facility of connecting external crystal to timer 1 for generating the clock source. So there is one internal oscillator present in timer 1 which uh, is connected to that crystal and uh, this combined circuit is used for generating the clock signal and that clock signal is given as input to the timer. So if you want to use that facility then we have to make this bit that is T1 OSC EN bit equal to 1. Now we will see the block diagram of timer 1 module that is present in PIC 16F 877. So here this is the external pin RC0 and this is the external pin RC1. So as I said, we can connect external crystal between these two pins in order to generate the clock signal using the internal oscillator. So the circuit that is shown over here, this is the oscillator circuit. So using this circuit, the clock source uh, clock signal can be generated. And here we have one multiplexer. So uh, this multiplexer is used for deciding the clock source. So TMR1 CS means it is used for selecting the timer one clock source. So we have two options. One is the internal clock source that is F oscillator by four or the external clock source, which is applied from the external pins. So uh, if we want to select the internal clock, then we have to simply make this bit equal to zero and if suppose we want to use the external clock signal then in that case this bit should be made equal to one then the next one is a prescaler so a prescaler is used for dividing the clock signal by specific values now the, here the values that are available are one two four and eight so we can decide these values with the help of these two bits that is t1 ck ps1 and T1 CK PS0. So using these two bits, we can divide the incoming clock by a specific value like 1, 2, 4 or 8. 
then the further the lower clock frequency signal is given to the next block that is synchronized date so using this synchronized detector block the clock signal which is coming at the input of this block is synchronized with the internal clock source or the cpu clock okay and then it is given to the next block so we have either option to use this block or we can uh, simply disable this block so the next the clock is given to the multiplexer block so using this multiplexer we can decide whether we want to synchronize the external clock signal with the cpu clock or we want to just use the unsynchronized input so if you want to use the unsynchronized input we have to simply make this bit equal to one so the whatever clock output of prescaler is there that will be directly used and whenever this bit is made equal to zero in that case the clock signal coming from prescaler will pass through this synchronized detector block and then it will be synchronized with the internal cpu clock and then it will be available at the input of this multiplexer so the output of this multiplexer is again a synchronized clock or a synchronized clock that is further given as an input to this and gate so the job of this and gate is to either enable or disable the timer one so to do that we have this bit called as tmr1 on so using this bit we can pass the clock to the timer uh, register or we can block this clock going to the timer register so if you want to pass the clock or we want to turn on the timer then in that case this block should this bit should be made equal to 1 and if suppose we want to turn off the timer then simply we have to make this bit equal to 0 now the clock that is available at the output of this AND gate is connected to this timer resistors. So upon every clock pulse, the value that is present in this TMR1L and TMR1H will be incremented by 1. And combining these two resistors, we get a 16-bit value. Okay. So first of all, all the uh, bits in this lower resistor will be incremented. After that, whenever this lower resistor overflows, this higher resistor will be incremented by 1 and so on. So this process will be repeated until both the resistors overflow. And whenever that thing happens, it means that the value in the timer is FF, FF hex. And whenever one more clock pulse is given, the timer overflows. And whenever it overflows, it is indicated with the help of this flag that is TMR1 IF. Okay, so this is the block diagram of timer 1 that is present in peak microcontroller now the resistor that is used for configuring this timer 1 is called as t1 con resistor okay so it is a 8 bit resistor so the msb bits that is bit number 7 and bit number 6 are unused then after that we have two bits that is t1 ck ps1 and t1 ck ps0 so using these two bits we can uh, decide the value of prescaler means by how much value we are going to divide the incoming clock signal then we have next bit as t1 os e n so using this bit we can either enable or disable the internal oscillator so if we are going to connect a crystal to generating to generate the clock then we have to enable this oscillator in that case this bit should be made equal to 1 and if you don't want to use this oscillator then simply we have to make this bit equal to 0 then the next bit is t1 sync bar so using this bit we can decide whether we want to synchronize the external clock with the cpu clock or we want to send the clock unsynchronized to the timer so if you want to synchronize it if you have to make this bit equal to 0 and if you don't want to synchronize it then simply we have to make this bit equal to 1 the next bit is TMR1CS. So using this bit, we can decide the clock source for the timer. It means that this bit can be used for deciding the mode of operation of timer. So we can either operate that timer in timer mode or in counter mode. So whenever we want to operate that in timer mode, in that case, we have to make this bit equal to zero. Means internal clock signal will be used for incrementing the timer and whenever this bit is made equal to 1 it means that we are going to operate that timer in counter mode in that case 
the clock signal to that timer 1 will be the external clock signal. And finally the last bit is TMR1 on. So using this bit we can turn on or turn off the timer. If this bit is 0 then the timer will be off means there will be no increment in the values present in the timer register and whenever this bit is equal to 1 it means that we are going to start the timer and the values in the timer register will go on incrementing on every clock pulse. So this is the uh, T1CON SFR used for configuring the timer 1 module. Then lastly the SFRs that are associated with timer 1 are the following SFRs. So here INTCON is associated with timer 1 because it is having the interrupt enable bits. So GIE is global interrupt enable and PEIE is peripheral interrupt enable. So whenever we want to use the interrupt generated by the timer 1 at that time these two bits must be enabled means these two bits must be made equal to 1. Only then timer 1 can generate an interrupt. So that's why INTCON is associated with timer 1. Then we have PIR1. So in this PIR1 we have bit number 0 that is TMR1 IF. This is the timer 1 overflow flag bit means whenever timer 1 overflows this bit becomes equal to 1 otherwise it is always 0. Then the next SFR is PIE1. So in this SFR again the bit number 0 is TMR1 IE. So using this bit we can either enable the interrupt of timer 1 or we can disable the interrupt of timer 1. So whenever timer 1 overflows at that time if we want to generate an interrupt then this bit should be made equal to 1 and if suppose the timer overflows and we don't want to generate the interrupt then in that case we can make this bit equal to 0. Then the next two resistors are the timer resistors that is TMR1L and TMR1H. So these two resistors are again used for simply counting the value in the timer. Right? So TMR1L is the lower 8 bit resistor and TMR1H is the higher 8 bit resistor. And finally the last SFR is T1CON which is just now we have seen. It is used for configuring the timer 1. So if you have any doubt related to this timer 1 module then you can ask that doubt in the comments. Thank you.